Yo, what is up my homies? Pat Chadwick here, back again with another video. And today I'm gonna to be talking about the five things that you shouldn't do when you're practicing calisthenics. So I've been training calisthenics for about six years now. So I started in 2016. And all those years, of course, I've made many mistakes and I've learned so many things along the way during my journey. And I just wanna share with you what I would tell my 16 year old self based on the experiences that I've gained. So the first one is, learning too many skills at one time. So, of course, in calisthenics, that's, the skill range is endless, right? There's so much to do, and you know, you want, you want to get as many skills unlocked as possible. Well, this is good because, you know, it will drive you to train and train and train. Training for too many skills is just no good. It's inefficient. So, I, now I go by the rule of training three skills at a time. That's the very max, ideally two because at one point when I started, I was doing about maybe four to five skills, <laughs> you know, trying to learn the um, strict muscle up, uh, the Hefesto, front lever, back lever, handstand push up, and so on. And why I say it's bad to train many skills at one time is because you're gonna divert your attention to these, you know, five different individual fragments, and it's just gonna slow down the speed of which you attain skill. Whereas if you to focus on two to three vital skills that you really want the most. So for me right now, it's the planche and the front lever. So I'm just literally training these two skills. I put all my time, my energy and my effort into these skills. And of course I'm seeing quicker results. Yeah, it can lead to, you know, demotivation as well because, you know, you're, you're training all these skills, five skills, for example, and you're not, you're seeing slow progress. So it just really puts you down. So yeah, the rule of three, Two skills is even better. So, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that I'm training planche, front lever, and the one-arm handstand. Yeah, so these are the three skills because we only have seven days in a week and training all these different skills in one session is just gonna be inefficient. So three skills is good. So moving on to second stage is no rest. Now I know that it can become quite addictive when you started seeing some little progress when you started training calisthenics especially you know, when you're progressing from, let's say the top front lever to the advanced top front lever, or you're progressing from the advanced top planche to the straddle planche, you may wanna just keep training, 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 because then rest days is just like, oh man, I'm wasting my time not by resting and not actually working out. Yes, it makes sense for you to just keep training, you know, because you're seeing progress. But over time, as you keep loading the body, with more tension, 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 it's just gonna give in. You're just gonna become so fatigued that your training sessions will be unproductive and inefficient, which will cause you to not make as much progress as you would if you were to rest. Now, a good way to start for beginners, so if you're a complete beginner to calisthenics, I'd say start with three to four sessions a week of training with one day rest in between. So for example, you train on Monday, rest Tuesday, 
train Wednesday, rest Thursday, train Friday, rest Saturday, and then train on Sunday. That's a good way to do it. Another way is to do five days a week, but you vary the intensity in between sessions. So I've learned this from Denton Conte, who is a planche and a calisthenics OG. I bought his um, planche guide and he talked about this method called greasing the grove. So what this means is you train five days a week, right? So Monday to Friday. And what you do is on Monday, you train at around 80% of your max capacity. So at eight out of 10. And then on Tuesday, so the next day, you train between 40 to 60%. And then the following day, you train at 80%. And then the day after that, you train at 40 to 60%. You see, you're continually training, but you're not going at a maximum effort because you're allowing for rest in between, active rest in between those, you know, those days. And I remember he mentioned that it's better if you have, you know, five days of working out where you switch intensities rather than having three days a week where you're going max all the time, you know? Because the more you practice of the skill, the better you become, you know? The more time you put into it, the more hours you put into it, the better you'll become. So yeah, it's good to have at least one rest day in a week if you're up, up around an intermediate to an advanced level. Um, so currently I train about six days a week. Um, so I do the grease in the growth method. So Monday to Friday, you know, 80% intensity one day, 40 to 60 the next. I rest on Saturday and then I train again on Sunday. And to add to this, it's important that you have at least seven hours of sleep because I notice that whenever I'm on less than seven, my, my training, my mindset is just not there. Like I feel like I have less energy to perform my reps. You know, they normally say you should have eight hours of sleep a night, but I can, I can appreciate that not everyone can do that because obviously their workload and the schedule or their habits. So optimally, the ideal amount of rest for me is seven hours and I would also recommend that to you too because it's really worked for me. So moving on to the, the third point that you should not do is not stretch. <laughs> A lot of my friends, right, they just go pound, 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 pound in their workouts and then each of them, they're getting sniped solid. Injury, 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 injury. One straight after the other, you know? Your body can only take, you know, the load for only so much until it will eventually get in so like tensed up. Your muscle get all tensed up, you get tendonitis and shit, and then you just won't be able to train anymore without actually having any pain. A key thing is obviously to warm up, okay? Warm up before your sessions. I say warm up is pretty much more important than the cool down stretches after the session because you know you get injured during the training session okay so it makes sense that you warm up to prep your muscle to prime up your muscles and to increase range of motion so that you can train without actually injuring yourself so I practice I pretty much spent about 10 to 15 minutes warming up both upper body and lower body um, I also made a video on my warm-up so check it out on the cards here so after the warm-up right Obviously you have your session and then what's really important is that you stretch afterwards. So I prioritize on stretch, doing a full body stretch and foam roll three times a week. Okay, so this will take around 20 minutes of foam roll. So I foam roll each body part for about a minute. So I use a timer, time it and you just roll, 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 roll all over the place. So I start off with foam roll for 20 minutes. Okay, all body parts. And then I'll move on to full body stretching. You know, just to release the tension I might have in my body, especially calisthenics. You know, you're doing high endurance or if you're doing weighted calisthenics, you, you feel it a lot in your muscles, you know. So it's good, just going to get tensed up. You see guys, right, they, they train so hard, their shoulders started coming round forward like this because they're just so tense. I was like that until I started seeing my friends getting literally injured one by one. Do you remember the snipe? Pew, 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 pew. So that's, that's the lesson learned. Fortunately, I haven't been injured, touch wood. Let's go touch wood right now. So I went to touch the wood panel, it's a British thing. So, um, so actually I was injured actually, it's because of, um, I had like a tendonitis here, just from doing planche, but it's because of the forearm tension. It was just so tight that it passed all the way through to here. 
So to get rid of that, I just foam roll the shit out of my forearms or use the lacrosse ball massage and just release any tension in the knot, okay? So put the lacrosse ball on the wall and you just roll it and press on any points that there is, you know, pain and you just hold it there. And a rule with stretching is um, to hold at least 30 seconds. That's the bare minimum, okay? I'll, when I, again, when I first started calisthenics, I would hold my stretches for about 10 seconds. And then last year, I started holding it for 20 seconds. And then now I'm holding it between 30 seconds to a minute. Thanks to Sophie Brace, who um, is a flexibility coach, and she's really flexible. And she just taught, she taught me that the magic number is up between a minute and two minutes mark, you know, for stretching to really increase mobility and she also tells me to treat your stretching like your workouts stretching is pretty much as important as a workout because you know you want to do them in sets because if you don't do them you're just going to get so tight up and you're just going to get injured so she says and i do this as well is to do three sets of each of a stretch for example very basic one like this 30 seconds 30 seconds so that's one set and you do it two more sets so moving on to the next one is so the fourth step i believe if i have a miscount is to train legs okay because <laughs> i've only started training legs for about over a year now i just didn't really see the point in it you know because i was just so focused on just you know unlocking different skills in calisthenics which is predominantly upper body focus right so I skipped legs from 16 all the way till about last year. So just before I finished uni, so final year of uni. So I think it was 2021 20, is when I started training legs properly. Before I would just do like the odd squats or something, body weight squats, pistol squats once or twice a week. But as my upper body started to grow, I can see my legs are just being really skinny, especially I've got small calves, right? Um, so it just started to look unproportional, if that's even a word. So it's good to train legs because, you know, you want to be able to wear shorts comfortably without having to feel embarrassed about it. Because sometimes I do so now, um, just because I've been neglecting legs, especially the calves area. But ever since I started training legs, I feel, you know, much more stronger, more powerful. I was able to contract my glutes, my quads, a little bit more for when I'm holding like the straddle plant, just from that extra strength. And it also helps with the core strength when you're training legs, right? Because of compound lifts such as your squats, your deadlifts, your RDLs. So training legs is really, really important. Um, both, you know, performance wise and aesthetics wise so that you can look well-rounded. It is quite true, I would say, in my personal opinion, that calisthenics people do neglect legs which is why I would tell my 16 year old so when I started, Pat, don't be a little bitch, you wanna start training legs, you know, at least once a week. I'm now doing twice a week. So one session would be super hard, you know, squatting heavy. Well, heavy for me, it's around 100 kg. We're making solid progress. <laughs> and then, on, so that's the hard day. And then on the second day, I work on unilateral training. So I'm working on one side, one, one side at a time, because obviously, there'll be imbalanced strength because one side, so your dominant side will normally exert most of the force. Train, you know, Bulgarian split squats, um, single leg, leg extension, single leg ham, seated hamstring curls, you know, just to increase my unilateral strength. So we're gonna move on to the final one, which is diet. Yes, diet is very important, okay? So, I, I've obviously, we're all human, right? We're not perfect. And on some weeks, I would just eat shit, like crisp, chocolates, cookies, takeaways, all sort, you know, when I was at uni. And it really, you know, affects my training performance on the following days. I just feel like all tired. You know, like that feeling when you have carbs, pasta, and then afterwards you just like feel all sleepy and shit. So that's it, literally, that, how I felt when I was eating junk food. And it just really affected my training, it affected my motivation, it just made me like, oh man, I don't feel well, I don't wanna go train. So it kind of made me feel like that. So I 
try to stay away from junk food and you know 80 percent of the time i would eat clean whole food so you know that's lean protein your vegetables and a little bit of carbs i try to go on low carbs so that i don't put on too much um, excess body fat from carbs so there you have it guys these are the five things that i would tell my 16 year old self when i first started calisthenics so to recap one is not to practice many skills at one time two is no rest three is stretch recover four is diet and five is to not neglect legs so if you do enjoy this video please don't forget to smash that like button comment in what you think if you experience any of these before don't forget to subscribe as this will really help this channel out thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video